everyone, I'm Natalia Volvao, and here's what's happening in LA this week. When it comes to natural disasters, the Los Angeles Fire Department knows that preparation is the key to success. Various agencies participated in a mobilization exercise testing their teams, their equipment, and their readiness to respond. Today we're simulating a mobilization exercise. The simulation is there's been a 7.2 earthquake in the city of Santa Clarita. OES has requested an immediate need. Use our regional task force to the city of Santa Clarita to assist with the damage and the victim rescue. And so that's what we're exercising here today is that process, the deployment of that team, and then ultimately the rescue efforts that are gonna take place on scene. The purpose of these exercises is to, number one, determine the readiness of the task force, identifying any areas of improvement and successes that they perform during the, today's activities. These areas of improvement and successes are put together in an after action report that helps the task force and the agency to develop a training plan. Number one, shore up and make sure that these successes occur again, and establish training programs to address the uh, areas of improvement that were recommended by the evaluators of this exercise. We do have evaluators here from OES, which is our Office of Emergency Services. We also have evaluators from our FEMA team. We have a large number of agencies that are here to help us with this drill. We have people who are participating as victims here, and we also have some partnering agencies which are bringing some much needed equipment here that can be demonstrated as well. So after every training exercise that we do, after every drill that we do, we always critique it. We find things that went well, we find things that are needed improvement, and then we also check the operational readiness, not only of our members, but also of our equipment. So if we have some equipment that is needed, then we can make those purchases. If we have additional training that's needed, then we can facilitate that additional training. But mostly this is to make sure that we all work together as a team, that we can work with other agencies, and that we can work with firefighters from all over the region. The main goal is to get everybody on board. The hope is everyone walks away from this learning something. This team is made up of members from various stations throughout the city. They all have to come together and show that uh, as the Los Angeles City Fire Department, it is truly one team, one mission. Getting funds directly into the hands of those who need it most is a challenge. Big Leap is a guaranteed income pilot to give individuals $1,000 a month. 12 months later, the city officials who backed Big Leap are sharing the difference the program was able to make. In 2021, the visionary idea took root. What if the city of Los Angeles provided $1,000 direct, no strings attached, payments to some of our most vulnerable Angelinos. We're excited to share the results of our guaranteed basic income, our Big Leap pilot program. The findings proved what we already know. People who participated in the program have better mental health, better physical health. They were able to seek and secure dignified work. Many of them returned to school, started their own businesses. These extra resources allowed families to thrive. My experience was wonderful. Uh, I take, uh, at the time, my son was six. I was a single mother working full time, pretty much trying to figure out how to navigate as a new mother, especially if a child with special needs. I had to dedicate at least 40 to 50 hours a week for my son's therapy. And I just, at the time, I just didn't know where anything was gonna come from at that point. I think that we forget that people need help and sometimes it's just for a small amount of time. That little bit to you meant a lot to me. When we launched this program, we had over 50,000 people who applied. Um, in the end, we did a randomized selection of 3,200 participants. We just announced uh, a plan to uh, expand our Guaranteed Basic Income program. Uh, we're going to be in promotion this morning, Councilman Hugo Martinez and I. Uh, to ask the city administrators to find funds for a follow-up program. These programs have been very effective. Uh, they have lifted folks out of poverty, they've provided resources that would not normally be available, and it demonstrates that individuals know best how to use their, how to use funds. To be able to see the city that I grew up in um, step up to help the people directly versus helping programs that are supposed to help the people, I thought that was amazing.
South LA has a new center which will help the community access city services on its doorstep. The Development Services Center will house three departments under the same roof, city planning, building and safety, and housing, making it easier to get things done across these areas. On behalf of Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson, we would like to welcome you to the Constituent Services Center for the official South LA launch. We've never had a presence here. We've never had an office city planning in South Los Angeles. So the importance of it is you no longer have to go to City Hall in order to get services. So in issuing permits, uh, sometimes that work touches multiple departments, city planning, building and safety, housing, and uh, sometimes we need uh, approval from all three. Having them together under one ceiling makes that collaboration and coordination much, much easier. And that is for the benefit of our customers and our community here. Due to the remodeling, we moved out temporarily in 2019 and we're very happy to be back here again. We have a public counter here where people can come and get their questions answered about our rent stabilization ordinance, how to register your unit for that, how to find out if your owner has registered the unit. A lot of times people aren't sure quite what their rights are, so they come and ask about that, either landlords or tenants. I always think about how my grandfather used to make me take him to people's offices, because he didn't want to, he wanted to see people face to face. So this is going to be more than just where you get a permit. This will be a place where we can have very complex, very important conversations about the community and how that we can uplift the, the neighborhoods and communities of South Los Angeles. From hosting the Oscars to selling souvenirs, Hollywood needs constant upkeep to continue shining. Hugo Soto Martinez and the Hollywood Partnership are collaborating on Access to Hollywood to make sure the most iconic parts of Hollywood are ready for their close up. The Hollywood Partnership is a public-private organization that oversees 80 blocks of Hollywood. It's a property-based improvement district, and so we provide clean, safe hospitality services throughout the district above and beyond what the city provides. Access to Hollywood is going to be a 3.6 mile stretch with a lot of improvements. It's gonna go from La Brea all the way to where Hollywood meets Sunset. We're gonna have protected bike lanes, more pedestrian safety. We're gonna widen the sidewalk so we can have a robust Al Fresco program here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But more than anything, it fits in our larger vision to make Hollywood the place that we know it can be. Well, we're lockstep with Councilmember Soda Martinez. Thrilled to say that we have a very collaborative, strong working relationship. So the work that we do, which is beyond the Clean and Safe program, is economic development, ensuring businesses get what they need in order to thrive here. Work with the residential community to make sure that we've got open space for people to play. A lively entertainment and restaurant scene are things that are just so important to this neighborhood and we help make those, make sure that they thrive here. So when we talk about the vision that we want to see for this district and for the city, we have to row in the same direction with as many people as possible. And so in this case in Hollywood, we work with the bid, we work with the small business owners, we work with anybody that wants to see Hollywood thrive and, and make LA the world-class city that it deserves to be. So we welcome any partnerships as long as it's to create a more, a more equitable, more just, and more livable city. We want you to go to hollywoodpartnership.com. There's information about our clean and safe program. We have a 24 seven dispatch center. The number's right on the website and they can call or text us for anything that's non-emergency. If someone's having an issue on the street, but it's not a 911 call, you can call us and our safety folks will come out and talk to those folks and get them what they need. When we work on so many things here in the district, I oftentimes think about what is gonna be left behind after my tenure leaves. And so a lot of the, the investment that we're making here is gonna is gonna be enjoyed by many, many generations to come. And so it's always good to think about that. Think about the future. Don't think about yourself when you're making these decisions as an elected official. Next time you're at the Walk of Fame, look up from the stars on the ground so you can catch the murals of Hollywood icons all around you. A free business accelerator program in Reseda. A new entertainment council is working to keep film production in LA. 
and the city gets recertified as a community wildlife habitat. The story is up next on City Beat. LA City Bureau of Street Services is partnering with the Economic and Workforce Development Department to bring a free business course to the Reseda area. The six-week course is designed to help aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners start and grow a business. Managed Career Solutions, MCS, operates the Business Accelerator Program, which offers marketing, financial management, and expert guidance. All resources are provided free of charge, and participants have an opportunity to receive a $5,000 micro business loan. The next Business Accelerator program begins on August 15th at Councilmember Bob Blumenfield's Reseda District Office. To apply, visit tinyurl.com forward slash MCS dash BAP. Mayor Karen Bass has convened the inaugural Entertainment Industry Council with representatives from television channels, streamers, the Motion Picture Association, and International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, IATSE. According to Film LA, the partner film office for the city, production in the second quarter of 2024 lags behind that of 2023 and is down 33% from five years ago. Construction of seven new studios and sound stages has been expedited under the mayor's executive directive number four, which removes barriers to business creation. The Entertainment Industry Council is looking to bolster business with solutions that will keep production in Los Angeles and benefit all the workers involved. For more information, visit mayor.lacity.gov forward slash press. The city of LA has officially been recertified as a community wildlife habitat and is the largest city to receive the certification of the National Wildlife Federation. The certification is the result of citywide community efforts assisted by LA City Sanitation and Environment. In order to become certified, green spaces need to provide four basic elements that all wildlife need food, water, cover, and a place to raise young. Garden spaces must also use sustainable practices like conserving water and removing invasive plants. Communities can earn national wildlife certification for local properties by engaging members in education and outreach and in projects such as habitat restoration. For more information on the work of LA City Sanitation and Environment, visit LACitySan.org. Line, house, bingo. Those are some of the words you'll hear at the Fairfax Senior Center. The center offers different activities to help seniors stay sharp and socially engaged. It's never too late to make friends, learn new games, and even practice downward dog. You are at the Fairfax Senior Citizen Center. We service all of the seniors in this area, and we focus on the social, cultural, recreational, educational, different types of therapeutic needs that we have that the seniors need. 42, 42. Bingo. I heard a bingo, ladies and gentlemen. I heard a bingo. It's our usual bingo day, and I believe it's handled so wonderfully by Bill and Caroline who call the numbers. And we're getting more and more people coming each week. And I really like the atmosphere. I look forward to it. G5050. We enjoy the parties. We enjoy bingo. And everybody loves it. At halftime, me and Ellen, we give them some humor. We crack some jokes. The bottom line is, it's very nice. Everybody has a good time, and that's what it's all about. The exercise, I do strength building and yoga. And uh, we also have Mahjong game on the first Friday of the month. We will be teaching Mahjong to people who'd like to learn. You meet new people, you make new friends, and it's really an excellent place to come. The center is very important. It's a great place. The people are great here. Uh, I happen to live close by, so I'm here all the time, and I've made some great friends, and it's really it's great for the community. This is just a very good place to be either involved in or just come out and have a wonderful time. What else is there in life? Hi. 
1919. If you're a senior or know one who would love to join in the fun, make sure to visit laparks.org to find your nearest senior center. It's the classic career catch-22. You need experience to get a job, but you won't get a job without experience. Enter the Department of Public Works. With their internship program, they're providing young hopefuls with training and real work experience to kickstart their careers. The City of Los Angeles in general and Public Works Department in particular uh, provides training and education for students who are trying to prepare for professional careers. And the Department of Public Works is intricately involved in its five bureaus to make sure that students have the opportunity to inculcate themselves to the experiences they will get. The kinds of work they are doing is related to the professions that they are studying. Engineering, for example, and then in terms of financial services, the same. One thing about financial services is that they are generally involved in every organization. During this summer, I've been actually going to different departments and interviewing them, so asking them specific questions, whether it's about how the shortfall has impacted their department or what they are currently doing in order to work around this. So I apply because I know that when it comes to politics and also just working with the government, there's a lot to learn and a lot of transferable skills into real life. So I realized that not only would I be able to learn finance and deal with something in my field, but also at the same time, I'd be able to gain real world experience. After the George Floyd experience, we looked at the data and decided that there were areas uh, we had an underrepresentation of African American engineers. We had in our accounting department an underrepresentation there as well. And so we decided to put together the HBCU Recruitment Committee. And this would have allowed us, even though we are not able to get the talent here within the state, people from this state are going to school in other places and we want it to be a vehicle by which they could return home and be a part of this great city when they get their knowledge and skills. For anyone that has no idea what this internship is about and how I would explain it to them, I would say that it's maybe surveying, going around asking people how the situation has impacted them. For this instance, examining the impact of the budget shortfall on public services. I'm going around to other departments, people that are dealing with these firsthand and asking them how they are dealing with it, how it's affected them, and how they think that they will proceed in the future. The thing that people in this country aspire more than anything is to be given an opportunity to have an equal chance. And when I think about diversity, I think it is the strength of who we are. But I think equally, inclusion. Can I be included in what we do? And so these three principles are the core values that bring us together for what I call the American dream. We saw how the city is helping graduates get work experience. But what about the step prior, going to college? LA's Chinatown Branch Library held an event to help college hopefuls navigate some of the financial challenges they'll face in their new chapter. Today we're having our College 101 workshop here at the Chinatown Branch Library. We're connecting teens in our community with financial literacy resources and college and prepping them for college applications. A lot of times, teenagers need a lot of hand-holding when it comes to understanding financial literacy and uh, how to navigate the college application process. So what are the issues that they may run into? And then what are the avenues that they can take uh, when they decide which college they want to attend? I am actually an immigrant. I came from Egypt two years ago, and it was really motivating to be here and to get to know about um, a lot of things about college and about how, um, how the bank works and how to take care of yourself financially as well as emotionally and try to like avoid scams when you're in college. We want to make sure that we present this information to our youth and our teens so that way they know what to look out for and uh, who to trust and who not to trust when they get caught up in a situation. What I would really like them to take away from the session and from the program as a whole 
is how to take agency over their financial habits and financial decisions and how to confidently set financial boundaries with people in their lives. The Chinese floral arts exhibit gathered nature and art lovers around breathtaking floral arrangements. Sharing this ancient art and highlighting its importance is helping to keep the cultural practice in bloom. Very excited, we have a floral delegation from Taipei. We are putting on a excellent traditional Chinese flower art exhibition. The culture of Chinese spans 5,000 years, and the traditional Chinese flower art is from the Song Dynasty, it's a thousand years ago. All the flowers are created by our delegation floral master from Taipei, along with our local students. We found that the flow, Chinese floral arrangement is kind of like no more than uh, two or three people doing it. So we feel like this is really important for us to have the mission to spread out the cultural in the United States, especially in American cultural as well. We want to spread. We want to share our thousand years cultural in the United States as well. Within it, that is the education component that is about self-efficacy, finding your life balance through the study of the four arts. Sharing cultural experiences helps all of us for the future interact. It increases our diversity and the appreciation that we have for each other, and that makes us a better community long term. For the Chinese American Museum to be located here at El Pueblo is, is a win-win for all of us. We can do more cross-cultural events in addition to doing events about the Chinese in America and also about the Chinese overseas. In this week's feature story, I sat down with Angel City Football Club's Catherine Davila to talk about how the club is impacting the local community with a range of social outreach programs. Let's hear this story. Angel City Football Club of the National Women's Soccer League is working really hard to break glass ceilings and really change the rules of the game. I'm here with the Head of Community and Marketing, Catherine Davila. Thank you so much for being here, Catherine. Of course, thank you, Natalia. It's a pleasure. I know that you've worked with Play LA and specifically mm -hmm. Girls Play LA, the LA Parks to create the Soccer Leadership Academy. Yeah. What's that about? So that is one piece of our impact work, and I'll just give the sort of broad strokes of what our impact work is, which mm -hmm. is by providing essentials and education. As we think about essentials, that's everything that somebody needs to sort of think beyond survival and think about dreams and think right. about thriving. So the way that shows up is really everything from food security work that we do with DoorDash to ensuring uh, with Chevy that 100 people every match have tickets and transportation to our games for free. And then just to making sure that we have safe, reliable places for girls and gender expansive youth to play the sport. And so what you're going to see from us is expansion and really deepening of relationships with the city of LA Rec and Parks, with GPLA, you know, expanding beyond the Leadership Academy to ensure no and low cost access for girls across this entire city. And obviously one of the key things here and the power just of the existence of Angel City is this whole idea that if you can't see it, you can't be it. And so that is one of the reasons it's so important to bring these youth players here, to see the players on the field, to see a president who is a woman, to see, I 
I think it's 70% of our staff is women. We're working on balance, right, but right. you know, to, to see those things is really impactful. No, and I love that you have a specific department at the street team, right? Street team What's is a its purpose? huge, huge part of that. So street team, crazily enough, was formed during the pandemic. We said, we have to go out and actually meet people. Um, people need to know we exist, because at that point I was getting on the phone and people thought I was coming from the brewery, the Angel City Brewery. Um, oh, yes. They didn't know there was a women's team here. They didn't know there was a women's league in this country. Wow. And so it was just like, we have to actually like Educate be people grassroots. face to face. Exactly. One of the most impressive things about Angel City as an organization is that the values and the goals have sort of remained core to who we are since the beginning. And fundamentally, that is to push for equity by using sport and entertainment. I worked in the youth soccer space and in the adult women's space really trying to build a pathway so that women could have a relationship with the sport for their lives. So Angel City really has been sort of the pinnacle of that same work to really form a connection with our city and say to people, this is a place where you find your people. This is a place where you can find meaning and joy and beyond what's happening on the pitch, which you know is always the center of what we do, we're gonna change the world for the better. In this week's Things to Do, celebrate 150 years of the Point Furman Lighthouse. Enjoy some strong words at LA Public Library and participate in a Bio Blitz Science Challenge. All this up next on Things to Do. Point Furman Lighthouse is hosting an anniversary party and everyone is invited to celebrate its 150 years. LA City's Rec and Parks Department and Point Furman Lighthouse Society are hosting a community celebration of this landmark lighthouse. Enjoy vintage exhibitors and games, Victorian costumes, Model T cars, the San Pedro High School Band and Drill Team, family activities, and food for purchase. The first 150 children at the event will receive a special gift. Head to the historic Point for Men Lighthouse for the grand 150th anniversary celebration on Saturday, August 17th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information, see the events tab at laparks.org. LA's Public Library invites you to sit back and enjoy a summer-themed show from the Strong Words crew on August 18th. These live spoken word shows are known as storytelling for grown-ups and have been a hit in Silver Lake and Atwater Village for the last 13 years. Strong Words brings its summer show to the Central Library's Mark Taper Auditorium. Featuring voices of the city, the format is fun and refreshing stories, poetry, and on this occasion, special musical guest, Jason Luckett. Reservations are strongly recommended. Enjoy the summer vibes of Strong Words taking place on Sunday, August 18th at 2 p.m. For more information, visit LAPL.org forward slash events. Join LA City Rec and Parks in a Bio Blitz Challenge gathering as much data as possible on Saturday, August 17th. Junior urban ecologist Ryan Kinzel will lead participants in learning more about the natural environment while helping in a scientific survey. The goal is to find and identify species of plants, animals, and fungi in the Ken Malloy Harbor Regional Park using the iNaturalist phone app. Everyone is welcome to help in this survey of biodiversity. Come prepared with sunscreen, water, comfortable clothing, and a charged phone with the iNaturalist app software already downloaded. Head to the Ken Malloy Harbor Regional Park for the Bio Blitz Challenge on Saturday, August 17th at 8 a.m. For more information, see the events tab at laparks.org. And that's a look at some things to do. And that's all for this week. I'm Natalia Bilbao, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. Remember that you can watch us online anytime at lacityview.org, and we're also on Instagram, Facebook, X, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.